guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be sharing our 2023-2024 homeschool year math curriculum picks. If you're new here, um, for the upcoming homeschool year, I'm going to have a fifth grader, a third grader, and a pre-Ker. And so in this video, I'll be sharing all the math curriculum we plan on using for all the different grade levels. This video is part of a collaboration hosted by Devine from Common the Chaos and Shauna at Homegrown Homeschool. These ladies have put together so many different collaboration playlists talking about specific uh, subject curriculum picks like language arts, family subjects. And so if this is the first video you're watching, I'm going to link the playlist down below so you can see what other families will be using for their math picks. But then if you're interested in the other subjects, I'll have some of those playlists linked down below as well. All right, so I'm going to do this from my youngest child up to my oldest. Uh, they are all doing their own separate math curriculums. Math is something we do not do together as a family just because they're all on very different levels. So for my pre-care who's wrapping up preschool, we have been using a preschool math at home from Kate Snow and we are almost done with this. Uh, this is a really great program. Um, I think we're on page 40 and there's like 80 pages. Uh, so this really helps them just start identifying like groups of numbers uh, to really start mastering those quick facts, like identify a group of three objects without counting it. Um, and so this program has been amazing. So I'm really excited to be working through this with my son. And since this has just been working so great with him, I decided to purchase uh, the Math with Confidence, uh, which is the next level from Kate Snow. We will probably be starting this this upcoming school year because we're almost complete with this. I did peek ahead and it doesn't seem like anything he can't do. My son is four, he'll be five in December. And so by the time we start this, he'll be, you know, getting closer to five. Um, I really like the approach to this. It's very simple, um, it's colorful. And so I'll be sharing more on this program as we get into it and the school year, but I really enjoy it. The manipulatives are easy that you need. Most of the time it's just stuff you have around the house. There's the um, separate student workbook. And as you can see, everything is big and colorful and not too crowded on the pages. And then you have your teacher's guide. For this younger age, obviously the teacher guide is pretty intense because it's, you know, telling you how to teach everything. And so we, I will be working on this with him one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. For my third grader, she will be using a Saxon Math 3. This book is absolutely ridiculously big. It's This is the teacher's guide and I bought it used because I wasn't sure how much I actually needed it uh, because we do also use Nicole the math lady. So we switched from the good and the beautiful for both my daughters into Saxon and they've just been doing really great with it. I don't love the younger grades of Saxon just because it's true Saxon. It's black and white. There's a lot of stuff on the page and so that's why I'm not choosing to use it for my younger son, um, at least until third or fourth grade is probably when we'd make the switch. I'm even kind of wishy-washy on math three. If my daughter didn't like it so much, I probably would have chose a different curriculum, a little bit more of a colorful curriculum for her, but she loves it. She actually started working through it um, at the this end of her second grade year because she finished her previous curriculum. And I did that more of a test, like would she actually like it? And she really does and she's doing really great at it. So even though it's not bright and colorful, we do use Nicole the math lady who teaches the lessons on video and she is a lot of fun and she's a great teacher. And so I think that's really why my kids enjoy this curriculum so much is because they get to use. So pretty much I've never opened up this teacher guide, which is just hundreds and hundreds of pages. This is how you would teach your student if you weren't using something like Nicole the math lady it has step by step how to teach the lesson everything you need for your child but I don't teach my third grader math um like I said we use Nicole the math lady so I've never opened this plus um at level three math I can still help so I don't need to go into here and like look at the lesson because I am still competent enough in math uh, to not need this. So if you're debating if you need this or not, if you're using Nicole the Math Lady, I don't know how much you shall get out of this. I would try to buy it used uh, so you're not spending a ton of money. But what you do need is like the actual student workbooks. And so this is what she does um, after she watches her lesson with Nicole the Math Lady. And I think there's never more than like 10 
problems on a page unless it's like a drill practice which then it's like just like a bunch of quick addition problems so that is what my third grader will be using and then my fifth grader she's going to be moving into saxon 65 so she is just completing saxon 54 and then she'll be moving into this this setup um you get a couple different books and so this is the answer key which this i do need <laughs> for her level math um and it one two it's because uh, she does use nicole the math lady to teach the lessons um but the answer key it doesn't it breaks down how they should solve the problem so it doesn't just give me like the answer it actually shows me how they should write out the problem and do it and so that does help me because i do need to help her sometimes with some of her practice so I do need the solutions manual for this level of her math and it just makes me it makes it a lot easier when I'm trying to help her or um, go over some of her problems with her. This is her test and worksheet booklet. So throughout the curriculum it will say okay do practice page F which may be like a drill of multiplication problems which we do sometimes we didn't do a lot of it this current year because it was a lot of addition and subtraction and she's mastered those skills so there was no need for us to continue to them uh, but now now it's like moving on to okay simplify fractions and a drill on that and so you really want to drill and master those skills and then there's the test it's normally like every five lessons there's a review test on them and so the tests are in this book and then of course her actual course book. So in this is all her lessons and uh, lesson practice questions and like mixed read practice. So I wanna say there's 120, yeah, there's 120 lessons, but there's also tests and there's also things called investigation. So I think when I break it down, it ends up being closer to like 150 things that need to get done. Um, we don't always do all the investigations. They're normally just on a a certain topic a little bit more in depth and so I kind of just judge it as we go to them but if you have never used these older level of Saxon how a lesson works is there is the new lesson and the new concept being learned and it's written so your child could just do this on their own so they read through it they learn their lesson and then there's a practice set of questions specifically on that lesson that they complete and then there's always a mixed review so then there's that spiral method where they're reviewing things taught in previous concepts so they're always reviewing skills and then it will start adding in new concepts each time um, with Saxon there are um, it is a little bit more rigorous um, and there's a lot of problems on a page and as they get older the problems become multiple step and they just take a lot longer to solve one problem at a time so there's normally around 30 problems 20 to 30 problems depending on like the review that it's doing I was recommended when we first started doing Saxon somebody said hey we only do half the problem and that is something I've stuck with even um we use nicole the math lady there's actually an option where you can set up like your grading and kind of how your course runs to only do that so if we're doing school on an odd day of the month so the 11th we do only the odd problems and when we're doing school on an even day we do the even problems. so we're doing about 15 to 16 review problems per day um and as long as I see that she's not struggling in those review concepts, um, she's normally scoring like an 85% or higher. She averages around 90% uh, between her activities and her tests. Um, I, that's fine with me. I don't feel like she needs extra practice. If there's something where um, she comes to me and she's always getting a specific type of question wrong, like for the longest time it was on circles, the diameter and the radius. She just couldn't remember which one was which. Um, and so I could pick up very quickly, like she's asking the same question on the same thing. So we were able to go back and review that lesson. And now that's not a problem anymore. So that's why I like the review approach, because even not doing all the problems every day, you still see what they're struggling with or doing really well with um, because of how Saxon just has it set up. So with that, like I said, we use Saxon the math lady, uh, we use Nicole the math lady for our Saxon math. So both my daughters, math is pretty independent except when it comes to if they're getting a problem wrong. Um, I pretty much have them keep doing it until they get it right. So that is where they need my help and that is where I have some of my teacher resources to use that. But other than that, Nicole the math lady, they log on, they watch her video lesson, they 
enter all the answers for their work in there and it's an automatic grading system. So my daughter will work through their math problems, enter the answer and they're told right away if it's incorrect or correct. And like I said, my rule is they have to complete it until it's correct. And so they get, they can, if sometimes they mistype the answer so they can just correct it and retype it or that's when I'll have to assist them with some of their math. So um, we really like Saxon Math. I really like it for the older grades. Um, once the textbooks start looking at like this, which is in 5-4, their fourth grade, um, that's where I really, really like the program. This one, and I think they have like kindergarten, math one and math two, not my favorite, especially for younger kids because it's honestly just kind of boring. Um, I think the material is good and I think it's teaching them the same skills they would learn, but um, definitely not something I'm probably I'm going to be using with my son until he's in that older at least third to fourth grade level is when we would make that switch so until then um, I'm trying out the math with confidence uh, program and then possibly the apologia we'll kind of just see uh, how he ends up what he needs for math so these are my math picks. If you're interested in using Nicole the Math Lady, there is a free trial if you use my link down below, as well as you get 5% off if you um, end up signing up. So that discount link is down below. And that is what I have for our math picks. Don't forget, if you're interested to see what other homeschool families are using, there's an entire playlist down below that was put together from the YouTube channels Calm in the Chaos and Homegrown Homeschool. So go ahead and check all that out down below and have a wonderful day. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.